you in. Yeah, I'm in. What do you say, Michael? I'm thinking. Come on, you gambling or what? I said I'm in patience. We're not playing patience, we're playing poker. I'll see you. Well, let's see your money, eh? I'm out. I'll see you. Well said. King flush. That's it then? Bed? Bank. Must get to a bank, which way? Uh, turn right out the front door, right round the block, right and right again, first turning on your left. You're on. Do you reckon you'll make it? I'll see you. Is it worth it? Worth it? Waiting for? Are you daft or something? <laughs> <laughs> Call this justice. Best available. It stinks. I'll open a window. Are you suggesting this? What? No, nothing. Any more tea? Stop prevaricating, Dooley. Uh, holy mother, how was I to know? You're a man of the world. Yeah, I've knocked about a bit, it's true, but basically I am an innocent. Basically, you're a bum. Well, I won't split hairs with you. Right, now, you answered this advertisement. Oh, I've no choice, Maggie, I swear. Oh, Dooley, dream to seek an honest job. Times must be hard. Hard? Would you know? I've got to read in the papers. Times where being unemployed, I mean professionally unemployed, gave a man some standing in Soho. You are reckoned to be something of a rebel, a bit of a bohemian, which are nowadays they're all at it, and the glamour's gone. The only way to prove your individuality is to go out and get a job. How was it worded? The advertisement, ah, oh, dead simple. It said, man wanted to do little jobs about the house. Oh, well, a cat who does that for free. Where? In a tobacconist window. Oh, yes. It's a Westminster number and it pays a pound an hour. Your employer? Uh, she's a lady. Huh, now who's splitting hairs? Well, all right, she's a whore, but she's got a soft spot. Oh, I bet. What's her speciality? Uh, lessons in humility. How do they work? The fella comes in, gets his gear off, she looks at his diddler and starts laughing. Does he pay? Oh, handsomely. I never understand men. She hired you? Sure. To do what? Uh, to look after her dog. That's the suspect. Our dill dog has cataracts in both eyes and a gammy leg. She needed someone to, you know, look out for it. Sort of a guide man for a blind dog. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Hey, yeah, half a month. Good. What's been happening? Well, well, I've been up north for the week, uh, refresher course. Yeah. Yeah, the return to us all refreshed, sir. Oh, aye. Well, it beats working for a living. Yeah, Styles, tell me, is there anything I should be aware of? Aware of, sir? Yeah, any individual or group paranoia? Any minefields waiting to be trodden on? Conversely, any medals waiting to be won? Not that I know of, no, sir. You know, this Irishman on the loose, what we got so far? I haven't got a clue. Yeah, silly question. How's the wife? Nice of you to ask, sir. Problem is, no. I'm not married. Yeah, well done. Good. Thank you, sir. 
So where are we now? Uh, we're in the flat. You and the dog? Uh, right. Madame's away. Uh, she doesn't operate out of the flat. Uh, she's got business premises off Greek Street, right? Her classroom. Go on. Well, it, it's Wednesday night and I fed the dog. He's dashing about on all three legs, bumping into the furniture, having a whale of a time. Thursday morning, he's as dead as a dodo. She's upset. Oh, you can imagine. That dog meant a lot to her. What was left of it? Well, you know, she'd watched it disintegrate over the years. So you agreed to bury it? Well, I owed it to her to do the decent thing. You all right? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it was, it, it was very moving. She pointed out the exact spot she wanted the animal buried. Where was that? Soho Square. Sentimental reasons. I said I'd do what I could. I felt I owed it to her. So you were actually digging a grave when you... Well, when this Detective Constable Cooper approaches me. Now, I'm not to know he's one of yours. What are you at, says he? I am disposing of the remains, says I. Of who, says he? Willie, says I. The dog's name was Willie? Yeah, after a client she'd had a few laughs with. And then, then this, this, this Cooper person gives me a funny look. So, so I says, playfully, like, you know, um, it's official. Who are you, says he? C.I.D., says I. C.I.D.? I says to him, I am an official informer for the C.I.D. Then what? He arrested me. You got a detailed statement from this Watkins, right? Right. Where is it? Uh. Ah. Now, what's this? What's that, Chief? Well, this. I, c I can't make it in the tale of it. We'll talk about hieroglyphics. What's it written in, Urdu? Oh, it's a sort of mixture. A mixture of what? A well, sort of mixture of Pittman's and uh, good memory. So, what's it say? I can't quite remember offhand. Good grief. Answer that for me, would you? If it's my missus, tell her, uh, tell her I'm otherwise engaged, you know, you should loaf. DCI Russell's office. Oh, hello, Mrs. Russell. Yeah. Ah. So, he locked you up for the night? He did. And Willie? In a plastic bag downstairs. Maggie, will you help me? Yes, all right. Oh, sorry, that, oh it's all right. Uh, well, I'd minutes. like a word in uh, private. Yes, Mr. Dooley was just going. Oh, I am. You are. Yeah, Forbes? What? Oh, no, I don't believe it. Oh, what's that, the third? Where was it this time? Oh, alarming. Oh, God, say that again. Kissed what? Look, tell them I'll be there in uh, 20 minutes, OK? All quiet on the home front. What'd you tell them? I played it cautious. Good. I told her you were taking a leak. How oh, very imaginative. Do you want to bring her back? No, we'll just leave it. It's like Piccadilly. I'm off for a sherbet. You coming? Get one in for me. Maggie. Hey, Sergeant Barrett, will you escort Mr. Dooley down to the front office? Ask them to let him go, and I'll accept full responsibility, whatever. If you get a chance, have a word with... What's the man's name? Cooper. No jokes, just tell him. Sure. Come on, chum. Oh, what are you doing about one hunk? Who? A Chinese restaurateur, a Mr. Lowe, hence... We pulled him last night. What for? Drunk in charge of a chopstick. Causing an affray. Well, his brief's been on the blow on his way over. A lot of pigeon English. Well, Reese, I've pleasure now. My fire got hover. Hover. 
You gonna see him? No way, you see him. Well, I'm up to here. All right, all right, I'll see him. Tom. You wanted... Uh... A, a minute, yeah, Jake. Uh, hang on, please, sir. Now, oh, listen, Jimbo had trouble bringing Watkins in. Uh, got a bit hairy by all accounts, what yeah. What happened? Well, Watkins is mainlining, though. Know. What's he on? He'll use Brasso, as long as it comes in the syringe. But Jimbo handled it all right. So busy handling the butcher's knife, he forgot to watch his... Coin job? Didn't he tell you? Well, I thought he looked a bit pale. He talked a bit high-pitched for a day or two. Look after him. Well, don't I always. Come on, sir. How does he get away with it? Oh, Jake. No. Jake? I'm talking about our other clown. Well, he doesn't give a monkey, does he? Well, this one could provide a lead. What? And an eyewitness saw him putting on his false nose. Who are we talking about? Our celebrated hot off the press inebriated bank robber. Who think we were talking about? I thought you were talking about Jimbo. You got problems? Uh, a few. Personal? Hmm? Janie? Hmm? What have you been up to? Look, I said 20 minutes. I could actually make it in 10. No, no, no. Your trail have gone cold. I'll have cooled off by then. Will Janie have cooled off? Dark. Perch. Go on. Got ten minutes. Starting from now. You do this often? Only when I'm flush. Because you lend a survivor. <laughs> How long you been playing cards? Years. Where? Prison. Poker? Patience. <laughs> Ah, Jake. Yeah. Hi, um, look, Russell is not in his office. Oh, he's in with Maggie. No, she's not around either. Then she's out on a job. What job? Irish Desperado. Well, it's likely, but you're not certain. No, Gov, I'm not certain. I've got an intro of my own. One GBH, one assault with intent, a possible yeah, adduction. Yeah, 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 all right, all right, all right. You've got a workload. But tell me, do, do I detect an air of conspiracy? A what? No, well, let's, let's just call it a smoke screen. I mean, no, I'm not getting paranoid, but this paddy with the gun, I mean, is he a protected species? Has he got the freedom of the city? What? Oh, you fancy him? You could say that. Keep yourself available. Right, go. I'll be in the pub. Listen, don't give me a hard time. I'm not in the mood, understand? I'm not in the mood for any heavy diet. I'm not being unreasonable. I've just had a very grueling morning. I have had it up to. You listen. Oh, grovel, grovel, sackcloth and ashes. I am listening, but I never asked Jimmy how this morning went at the office. What a selfish person I am. Yes, you are. I am. I am. I admit it. Last night, we ate, we screwed. I stay awake while you toss and turn and groan in your sleep, right? I get up at the crack, clean up, iron some stuff, make some breakfast, keep him happy. Kiss kids at the door, I'll miss you too. Have a nice day. You trundle off, half drunk, half hard, leaving me to get the entire goddamn place together before I go to school. So I can neurose about getting back in time to start the whole cycle all over again. And when we do meet up, I'm supposed to be... Be quiet, that's all. Just be quiet. <laughs> and love it. <laughs> Tender. Oh, stop it. Who the hell do you think you are? Listen, I'm the worker, mate. We were out on a job today, early, right? I had to pull a fruitcake named Watkins. Now, not only is he big, he's got muscles in his piss, and he's a lunatic. And well, that's why I was a bit, you know, last night. I wasn't so much scared as I was petrified, but I handled it. Not quite a bionic man, but uh, I handled it. And I'm here in one piece, and you're not celebrating. Why? Because you want to have a go. Well, the last thing I need is somebody not particularly skillful probing my psyche with malice of all thought. You're gonna put the boot in, go elsewhere. I'm feeling fragile. You selfish bastard. You got it. Number one original. I'm leaving. This finger indicates the direction in which you are more than entitled to move. What do you want? I'll start with a Harvey Wallbank. Hey, leave it out, Jim. Well, it's expensive, I'll enjoy it. So, where are you heading? Uh, I'm over the bridge. Can I drop you off? Ah, uh, bless you, darling, but no. I've made an arrangement to meet up with me nephew. He, he, he's not a blood relative in the proper way, but he, he married the stepdaughter of me cousin Brady's sister-in-law, so he's family, you know what I mean. And any time he comes down from Liverpool, he gets in touch and we meet up. So, um, he loves a drink, you know, and he treats me like royalty. So we'll have a few, and then he'll organise a blow-up. Blow out. Oh, absolutely. I leave it to him. Hi, Mr. Dash. Good luck, Dooley. Oh, and uh, keep your nose clean. I'm going to keep it close to the ground. I owe you for this, Maggie, and I remember, believe me, I remember what advantages.
they are. Ah. Are you fit? Yeah, I'm fit. Well, let's go. Said the blue-eyed boys, run to Maggie. You can ride her skirts all the way to the top. I'll have a word with you when we get back. You know where to find me. Are you sportive or something? It gets up my nose. Yeah, one more snide remark about blue-eyed boys and I'll be up your nose. Understood? You realise you were so sensitive? Meaning what? Prefer to hear it to your face, wouldn't you? Yeah, that sort of crap I'd rather not hear at all. Free country, mate. You can't stop people talking. Yeah, well, don't lay odds on that. I'm not a betting man. He's gonna push his luck too far one of these days. Yeah. What's the matter, Mark? You in the mood? Try me. She says she wants to pick her nose. Get up. Assistance. Miss Thring, I am she. I'm Detective Inspector Forbes. I'm sure you are. Yes, I spoke to you on the telephone. I speak to lots of strange people on the telephone. But this is a warrant card. And this is Count Dracula's calling card. Miss Thring, this is business. I'm buying. Fancy dress. I'm after a comic mask. For you or your companion? For a third party. Are you really a detective? I am. From the yard? No, Seven Dials. Oh, it gets better. I'm after a man. Yes? He committed a serious offence. Yes. Now, this man is armed and dangerous. He robbed a local bureau de change this morning. Afternoon. Uh, what do you want? Uh, it's all right. We're with her. Um, these are Sergeants Fenton and Barrett. They'll be... This is uh, Louise Phillips. She's the cashier from the bureau. Miss Phillips is a vital witness. Excuse me. Have you been drinking? Not so you'd notice, no. No. Take my advice and don't breathe heavy near a naked flame. Oh, uh, what's happening? Well, look, I've spoken to the manager of the bureau. He's been very cooperative. He reckons he should have the names and addresses of all the people that were in the place immediately prior to and just after the robbery by three o'clock. Was well, that it? My man is erratic. I'm going to play this one by ear. We might just get lucky. I, I've got a couple of radio cars prowling the vicinity. Well, you don't reckon he's still hanging around? Well, he kind of got far without attracting attention. According to all reports, and this is confirmed by the cashier there, he wasn't just drunk, he was legless. Well, same description. No change. Long dark coat on that, bowler hat, uh, and the comic mask. His party piece. Well, it suits you down to the ground. Do what? Oh, got to, you might. Shall we make a start? Winko ought to see them on. I am here to provide a service. She don't look all that different, does she? <laughs> I think it ought to be a man. Sergeant Fenton? Leave off. I'm serious. So am I. Well, under the light, Miss Phillips. <clears throat> no. He ain't dressed. Not for real life. Sorry, what? I think he ought to wear a hat. Bowler hat. Laurel or Hardy? Either or, about size nine. No, I don't think he should be stood like that. Like what? He ought to be more... Yes? 
Well, more menacing. A, a long, dark garment, you think? Yeah. A Count Dracula cape fits the bill. Now, how's that? No, that's not how it was. Can he stick his hand up? Up where? Uh, I think... Sit. Do you recognise oh. our man? Sorry. 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 Take it easy. Take it easy. Come on. Yeah, sit down. I'm going to look a right bloody nose. It'll work. Well, I think it will. But I think it'd better be sort of moving about. Know what I mean? Rather than just stood still. I said hovering. Uh, hovering? Right? Right. Oh, yes. Right. Right on. Give us a bucket of sand. I'll give you the desert song. On your way, Sergeant, and sober up. You. Made a force. Be with you. Are you cold? No. You've got no top coat. No. Well, let's provide you with one. Can you look at that? I'm looking. A lot of sheep went into the making of that. God, it, it's wonderful, though, isn't it? You want it? Come on, let's get you back to your room. You can have it. How will you stop the blarney, Michael? Is the drink talking? Will you listen? No, I will not. Will you wait for me here till I get a bang. Will you look at the price? Don't concern yourself with the humdrum finance of this situation. Wait for me here, will you? Back already. Chilly out there, innit? How's you like to see? With or without? Shop! Oh no. Oh my god! It's him, he's back! Uh, no business, as usual, right? Don't point it at me. Don't point it at me, please! Mr. Skelton! Hey, the business, the business! No funny business. No yelling for help or anything like that. If you yell for help, and if I get to hear about it, I'll be the first to know, right? Mr. Skelton! Anything that... <clears throat> anything the gentleman wants, Miss Phillips, you understand? Anything the gentleman wants, he may have without recourse to violence or bloodshed. I understand, and I accept, and I hope you do too. Spoken like a true coward. There are certain situations for which we are trained. That is why they made me manager, and why they have put me in charge. I know the proper procedure. And what's that? Deutschmark, Steiners, Hesos, Pesetas, Escudos, Crisaro. Less of the lingo, less of the lingo. Sterling? No, the old ones. Well, not too old. Um, 275 pounds, please. Um, 
Hey, make that guinea. Where's Jake? I left him hanging over a balcony. On his own? In Oxford Street, leave off. It's cruelly. With armed bank robbers. Look, I've read the reports. This man is drunk, he's armed, and he's dangerous. Drunk and bank robber. Can't be all bad. Are you serious? Well, he hasn't shot anybody yet. Has he? And if he does? Well, if he's that drunk, he'll probably miss. <laughs> Can I help you? Oh, I've come to bleed the radiators. What for? What do you mean, what for? I'm Ministry of Works. I'm an employee. I've got a paper to prove it. On it, it says bleeding radiators. They'll be bled regular, know what I mean? No, I bloody don't! What's she all happy for? Well, if they're not service regular, they don't function proper. Go on. You know, you get an airlock in your pipe, you won't be so blase either. You'll be the first to know. Yeah, well, you'll need authority. He has to go through the proper channels. No, you'll need a P stroke nine. Who are you? D of E. Who is he? D of E. Could be a bloody terrorist, all you know. Have you searched him? No. Right, you search him now. Get him over that desk and search him. Sorry, mate. A thorough job, understood? Yes, sir. Yeah, and I want to see his pass. Could have half a hundred weight of jelly up his trouser leg. Look, I'm all on a tin chow simmer. This is a bit like you. One ounce of young girl, but you're here. I'm all way. To be that long, you boy, I'm trying to let I jim die. Look at just make it to you. What do you think you're doing? I'm woman? gonna kill him! Even be the man's the well! Let go of me, you rat bug! I'm gonna do for him! Oh, for my dead what? Oh, I can arrange that as well! Will you come away from that phone? Who do you think you're going to phone? Ah. Are you demented, woman? I must be! I married him, didn't I? Here, you! Come back here! I've not done with you yet! You're not going anywhere! Get in that bed! Here! Did he purchase this? He did! He must be fond of you! He oh. is! I'm away to sell this for a few reddies, but don't you worry, I'll be back, and you hadn't better be here. You're a heathen woman. Ah, sue me. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get you, doctor. <coughs> get me a wet towel. She gave you one hell of a wallop. Not the first. I'll get you some medicine. Oh, good man. Make that a large scotch and a couple of aspirin. Your bog trotting wife has run off with me good coat. Well, that's the last you'll see of that. And may she die, Rorton. Doing anything special? I want you to stand guard over this, uh, this thing. No one's to touch it. And I mean no one, okay?
Miss Styles, there's a car in the car park. Get away. I've got a uniform lad keeping an eye on it. I want you to get down and take over from him. But I suddenly a traffic I warden. want you to get down there and stand over that car. I want it untouched by human hands until forensics take over. Understood? You insist? Mum. I don't mean at your convenience. I mean now. What are we at then? A walk out? Sorry? Where's Sergeant Barrett? He's in with the Chief Inspector. Fenton? I don't know, ma'am. Oh, great. Uh, there's someone waiting to see you. Oh. In your office, a Mr. Dooley. Oh, no. He says it's of the utmost urgency, ma'am. Oh, yes, I bet. Well, tell him I'll see him when I can. I'll be with Mr. Russell. The unorthodox approach is fine, just as so long as you don't come unstuck. Yeah, it was very funny, though. Scully is finding yourself back on the beat. Only needed one punter with a camera at the ready, that little scene would have been captured on film. Now, I take enough stick without having Fenton in fancy dress splash across front page, my governor's favourite paper. You've got him. Who? You haven't got him. Fenton? Oh, they got him. What are you talking about? Well, a couple of other Alexander Swallies and a patrol car pounced him as he was stepping out of the Bureau de Change. Oh. Uh, the governor doesn't think it's very amusing. Oh, so I've just, just conjured up a picture. Well, I suggest you think of something serious. Like what? Like getting the sack. While you lot are cavorting about playing charades, your Irishman only gone back, same bureau de change turned it over again. Hmm? Well, say something, someone. I don't get it. Or join the club. There's a car in the car park. That's reasonable. No, it's an old Ford Popular in the back seat of bowler hat size six and seven eighths. Long, dark coat, maker's name and address in the tag, Donahue, Dublin. The coat contains one colourful plastic mask. It's parked in my space. Get someone down there at the double. Uh, Dan Styles is on it. Now, fingerprints, forensics. You got an index number? It's 2353 UE. You want me to check it out? Yeah, I'll chase this. Uh, the Irish connection. Point taken. Get on the, the bomb rear squad. The outside door is safe. Well, how do you know? I tried it. Oh, God, Maggie, I thought you'd never come. Listen no, to what I have to tell you. I've got a very important phone call to make. Do you mind? But you've no idea. I've been mugged. This Amazonian female come at us with a bottle. She's robbed me and battered her husband. Uh, yes, I, I, I want to check it out. I think I'm right in saying an old Ford popular car, early 60s, colour dark blue, registration number 2353, uniform echo. That's my car. Now, this car has been abandoned in our car parking lot. We're treating it as sus... What? Oh, well, it's, it's Michael's car. Hold on a minute. That's the car I've driven over in in order to inform it's you. It's all right. I think I've sorted it out. Yes, thank you. Julie, what is it you're trying to say? I'm trying without much success to report a robbery with violence. I'm offering you a criminal. What's his name? Rose. Again? Rose slugged Michael with the whiskey bottle and then she had to go at me. Now, I put up a tremendous fight, but she's bigger than I am, so I decided it was prudent to let her win. So she made off with me new coat, and Michael is laid out on the bed looking like death warmed up. W where did all this take place? In his hotel in Catton Street, where he's staying. This hotel got a name? Uh, the Balmoral. And who is this Michael? He's Michael. He's me nephew, Michael. And you borrowed his car? Well, it was an emergency. And uh, Michael is in the hotel room, still. Oh, still. He wasn't jumping about much when I left him. <laughs> Where's Sergeant Barrett? He's with the Chief Inspector. They've taken the car apart. It's clean. Well, it's not exactly clean. But it's not going to go bang. No. Comforting thought. that the one from the car? The same. I think we've got him. You think? Well, it's a long, complicated story. I'll fill you in later. Uh, the owner of that mask is holed up in the Balmoral Hotel in Clarence Street. Right. Do you want me to round up a team? Yeah. Jay, get old Jimbo. Uh, Gov. Mm. We're dealing with an armed man, Gov. Yeah, well, according to Dooley, our man is feeling decidedly under the weather. Oh, hang over. He's been hit with a blunt instrument to wit a whiskey bottle. Oh, blend it all straight. Does it matter? Well, it obviously went to his head. Oh, God. Get going. Uh, you all authorised firearms? Yeah, I'll round them up. Right. Maggie, you hang around, tidy things up this way. Yes. It's got to be him, no? Having doubts? Seems too good to be true. It's been seen by dozens of people. Talk to dozens of people. They all remember him in detail. He even accosted one woman. She's talking about bringing a charge of indecent assault. Shall I get her in? It's worth a try. Yeah, well, if they bring him in before it gets dark, I'll uh, stick him in a line-up, OK? Yeah, I'm Maggie. Yeah. Oh, well, it's just that uh, Jane is coming in. Tonight? Of course, she's picking me up here. And you'd like me to have a word with her? Well, I could explain to her. I mean, I but should. it would be better well, coming yes, from me. Does she know you've talked to me? Well, I did mention it in passing. Well, you uh, better let me have the... The evidence? Mm. Don't have it. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, Mrs. Slater, do you think there's any possibility of you um, picking out this man in the lineup? An identity parade? 
Oh, fine. Well, look, as soon as we um, get this man in custody, I'll send a car over to pick you up. Yes, an unmarked car. <laughs> Your neighbours will think it's a minicab. Exactly. Yes, well, thank you for being so cooperative. Goodbye. Wakey, wakey. Come on, Cinders. We're all ready to go. What's that? We've located our drunken bank robber. Listen, I don't think I'm going to be much use to you. Now, don't you believe it? You're going to give him the kiss of life. Come on. Decided to come out of the closet, then, have you? Oh, very droll. Sergeant, you are in no fit state to accompany us, do you hear? Bad it with me. I've sent the others on ahead. Oh, well, it's about the doghouse for you, Jim. How do you feel? Rough. There's nothing to go around anyway. <laughs> Sounded you better see you're not disturbed. Will I'll you? try now. You're sure I'm not being. It's all right. Come on, sit down. Come on. Thank you. Oh. Who are you? Uh, the plumber. What? At DV, Department of Environment, Bleeding Radiators. So I am authorised. I have been searched and I've got a P stroke nine. I don't doubt it, but do you think you could go and do whatever it is you're doing somewhere else? I need my office. Oh, bloody Nora. I've been up and down those stairs like a yo yo. This is the only floor I haven't done, not for want of trying. Every time I race up here from down there, someone says, sorry, it's occupied. Right now. Yeah, well, that's it. That's life, I suppose. Well, obviously you're entitled. I think I'll go and inspect the lavatories. <laughs> then the one I get in there, someone says, sorry, it's occupied. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Bill uh, told you he had a word. Well, he sort of mentioned it in a roundabout way. I don't know how much he told you. Well, you can tell me the details. Uh, well, I'd like to hear your side of it. And about six years ago, we were going through a bad patch. Bill was working all hours, and I had the children to contend with. We were sleeping apart. I do remember thinking that we'd reached the end. Anyway, it was then that he met this woman. Did he mention her name? Lucinda. Lucinda Rice, yes. She had a nickname. She was known as Fluffy or Fluff. Well, I only mention that because it's a sort of a clue. Did you find out? One of his colleagues phoned me. A police officer? Yes. He felt that I should know. What? That Bill was seeing this other woman. Were those his exact words? Well, I'd say they were to that effect. Why is it important? Well, I'd say it was rather flimsy evidence. Would you? Look, I've got a snout. An informant. He's uh, one of many. I meet up with him in the most peculiar places at the most peculiar times. He's a good-looking man. Uh, he's, he's bright, he's, he's good company, but uh, I'm not having an affair with him. Bill was having an affair. Or did he forget to tell you that? Fast and furious, you follow me that way. Understood? Oh, we'll be right behind you, Gov. Yes. Hold it! I am. Now, what you're sitting up slowly, arms above your head, and don't move. Um, which is it to be? Up. Up. I said, up. Now move it. He means it, Michael. Right, keep your eye on those two. I am. I'm in an unenviable position. You want to swap? You know that he saw her recently? I know that he made a date. Another telephone call. Oh. And we share a desk at home. Well, I was writing a note to confirm an appointment, and I needed to check the date. And Bill's diary was lying there. I found a couple of pages, and there it was. 
He'd written fluff along with a telephone number, a date and a question mark. I just sat there and felt my stomach turn over. You tell Bill this? No, I couldn't. And apart from having him accuse me of prying, no, I couldn't. Jenny, can you remember that telephone number? Clearly. Is it? Yes, it is. Can you ring the number? No. May I suggest that you talk to them? Go on. Oh, I'm sorry? Oh, I think... No, no, I must have got the wrong number. St. Margaret's. It's a hospital just outside Bexley. Bill got word from a mutual friend that Lucinda Rice was in there after a motorway pile-up. She died the day after he received the call. I see. I'm damned if I do. I mean, why in God's name couldn't you have told me this himself? D.I. Forbes? Ah, you have. Fine, thanks. I'm sorry, Jenny. Mom, thanks. Mrs. Slater, we do appreciate it. Please sit down. Oh, you, you do work amongst a lot of men here, don't you? Well, there are some policemen. Well, please yes. sit down. I had noticed, but you are desperately outnumbered, aren't you? What is it? Twelve to one? That's some odds, isn't it? I mean, you're virtually surrounded by them all day. And I suppose you do some nights, too. Oh, <laughs> you mustn't mind me. I'm the right one, I am. To listen to me, you'd think I was jealous. No. <laughs> I am. Uh, Mrs Slater, um, when we go into the yard... There'll be a line-up of men. Now, now, I don't want you to feel nervous. You're not. I think it would be best if you could concentrate on a mental image of the man you saw outside the bureau. Oh, have such a nice young man pick me up. The one you sent over, I mean, in the car. Now, I, uh, I, I didn't quite catch his name. Detective Constable Spears? Uh, very nice and very proper with it, but underneath, you know, it was, it was all going on. Yeah. Now, if you could just keep this picture in your mind. Yes. Uh, will the same young man be taking me home? Possible, yes. <laughs> Did you know I could quite get to enjoy this? Assisting the police? <laughs> Have the press being invited? Press. For doing so, however, I should point out that the person may not be here, mm -hmm. and that you should touch or indicate the person only in the event you're absolutely certain it is the man you saw. And punch him up the throat. That won't be necessary, no. It's quite harmless, doesn't he? Without his gun, he is. The gun.
plan was an imitation, though, wasn't it? Well, it looked lethal. But they're still perfectly harmless. Unless he hits you over the head with it. You use a coal hammer for that. You see, walking into a bank and pointing a coal hammer at some. I have <laughs> never heard such bloody rubbish spoken in my life. <laughs> It smells like a brewery. You can't put a man in dock for that. Oh, can't you? I could. It's a clue. Can I hear him speak, please? Speak? Oh, uh, would you care to say something? Like what? Ask him to recite something. Recite something? Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do... Not obliged, but the lady would like to hear you say something. Well, I was walking down the street and I met this woman with a goose under her arm, and I said, Where are you going with that pig? And she said, That's not a pig, it's a goose. I said, I was talking to the goose. It's him! It's him! Kill him! You villain! You! <laughs> Thank you again, Mrs. Slater. We're very grateful. Oh, I don't know. Don't know what. Uh, I'm not sure I want to go through with it. I mean, would I have to give evidence in the court, like? It is possible, yes. And could that evidence help to put him away? That is the object. There's something about him. Yes, we call it the plausible rogue performance. Shall we go and find Detective Constable Spears? Get off this line, Sonny, now. Well, who was that? This is Forbes's little boy. This is a nick, not a nursery. D.I. Forbes? Oh, Steve, look, not now, love. I'll call you later, no, okay? Don't, don't hang up, it's urgent. What is? We've got a problem, it's the tank. Tank? What tank? Whose tank? There's a water tank in the attic, our attic. Was that unusual? Burst. Water tanks don't burst. You mean it's leaking? I mean it's burst. It's come apart at the seams. The water's pouring down the stairs. Oh my God! Do something. Like what? Well, I don't know. Turn it off at the mains and call a plumber. I can't find the mains tap. I've managed to wrap some stuff around the ball cock. Oh, I've been through yellow pages. There's, there's either no answer at all or an answer phone thing, or they're out on a job. Our phone's up the spout, and I had to call you. I didn't know what else to do. I just had to call you. Oh well, well look, don't burst into tears. That'll only make things worse. Look, um. Look, 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 bail out. You use a bucket. You do what you can, your end, and I'll sort it out mine, okay? Look, I'll get back as soon as I can, okay? Sandra, that man, the man from the ministry, Dan, Dan, the radiator man. Fit. I need you desperately. I think this calls for a discreet withdrawal. Look, look, can you come with me now? Please, this minute, now. Oh, don't put in overtime. You go mad, you do his nut. Well, what's more to the point, Maggie? You haven't got a fee strength name. Thank you.